When Mace Windu, along with Agen Kolar, Sacy Tin, and Kit Fisto, rushed to confront Chancellor Palpatine, it was one of the final desperate acts of the Jedi Order. Mace felt as though his entire existence had been for that single purpose, to preserve the Republic that he loved so dearly. He had already gone through a profound moment of shock and realization, and now, he rushed for one final stand against the Dark Lord of the Sith that had been pulling his strings for so many years. The novelization of Revenge of the Sith provides an in-depth look at Mace's thoughts as he fought Darth Sidious, truly showing his powers in the Force and lightsaber combat. Mace had recruited the three other masters to accompany him, as they were some of the finest swordsmen ever produced by the Order. He had deliberately commanded Anakin, the Chosen One, to stay behind, because he knew that Anakin was conflicted by his own fear and would be dangerous, even as an ally. Sidious easily killed the other three masters when the duel initiated, leaving Mace to stand alone. Sinking into Vapad, Mace Windu fought for his life. More than his life, each whirl of blade and whip crack of lightning was a strike in defense of democracy of justice and peace, of the rights of ordinary beings to live their own lives in their own ways. He was fighting for the Republic that he loved. Vapad, the seventh form of lightsaber combat, took its name from a notoriously dangerous predator native to the moons of Serapin. A Vapad attacked its prey with whipping strikes from its blinding fast tentacles. With a Vapad, one never knew how many tentacles it had until it was dead. They moved too fast to count, almost too fast to see, and so did Mace Windu's blade. Vapad was as aggressive and powerful as its namesake, but its power came at one great risk. Immersion in Vapad opened the gates that retained one's inner darkness. To use Vapad, a Jedi needed to allow themselves to enjoy the fight, to give themselves over to the thrill of battle, the rush of winning. Vapad was a path that led through the penumbra of the dark side. Mace Windu had created Vapad, and he was its only living master. The duel against Sidious was Vapad's ultimate test. As they fought, Sidious moved like a dark shadow, while Windu could be perceived as merely a blur of purple light. Their blades flared and flashed, crashing together with bursts of fire, weaving nets of killing energy in exchanges so fast that they could barely be seen. The force itself roiled and burst and crashed around them, boiling with power and light speed ricochets of lethal intent. The force around them was darkening. The force fed upon Sidious' murderous exaltation, and there was no longer any Jedi restraint present. Mace had cut himself loose. He was submerged in Vapad, swallowed by it. He no longer truly existed as an independent being. Vapad was a channel for darkness, and that darkness flowed both ways. He accepted the furious speed of Darth Sidious, drew the Sith Lord's rage and power into his innermost center, and then let it fountain out again. He reflected Sidious' own fury back onto him in the way a lightsaber would deflect a blaster bolt. There was a time when Mace Windu had feared the power of the dark, and the darkness within himself. But the Clone Wars had given him understanding, and he learned that the power of darkness was not to be feared. He learned that it was fear that gave the darkness its power. He was not afraid anymore. The darkness had no power over him, and he had no power over it. Vapad made him an open channel, half of a superconducting loop that was being completed by Sidious. They became a standing wave of battle that expanded to every inch of the Chancellor's office. The entire room might be disintegrated in a flash of red or purple as their blades danced around in a furious engagement. But there was still only the cycle of power, the endless loop, no wound taken on either side, not even the possibility of fatigue. It was an impasse, which might have gone on forever if Vapad were Mace's only gift. The fighting had become effortless for him, 
as he let his body handle it without the intervention of his mind. While his blades spun and crackled, while his feet slid and his weight shifted, his mind slid along the circuit of dark power, tracing it back to Sidious. Searching for a shatter point. Mace could sense the traces of fault lines in the force that formed shatter points, allowing him to see how places and beings fit together in the force itself. He found a knot of fault lines in Sidious' future. He chose the largest one and followed it, and it led him, shockingly, to the young man that had just approached them. The presence was familiar to him. The chosen one was there. Mace leapt for the window, giving himself once again to Vapod, and he could feel the end of the battle approaching, and so could Sidious. In the Force, Mace felt the Sith Lord become a pulsar of fear. Mace turned Sidious' fear into a weapon, angling their battle to bring them both out onto the window ledge. Sidious' fear made him hesitate, and he was forced to turn some of his force-powered speed into a grip on the slippery ledge. In that moment, Mace was able to swiftly disarm the Sith Lord, sending his saber tumbling a kilometer below. Now the Sith Lord, the dark shadow that had fought with such fury, was only Palpatine again. Mace remarked how the Sith would never be victorious, and that Palpatine had lost because of his own fear. Palpatine, his eyes smoking with hate, called Mace a fool, and asked if he really thought that the fear he had sensed was his, before sending lightning blasting from his fingertips. Mace had no time to comprehend what Palpatine was talking about before he needed to slip back into Vapod and angle his blade to deflect the lightning, completing the circuit of power. The lightning simply redirected back at its source. As the blistering energy of the lightning blasted Palpatine, the power that poured from his hands only intensified, as he fed it with his own pain. He called out to Anakin for help and Mace sensed that Palpatine wasn't afraid, or even worried at all. He finally understood, and felt Palpatine's shatter point, the absolute shatter point of the Sith, of the dark side itself, was that Palpatine trusted Anakin Skywalker. Mace pleaded with Anakin to destroy the Sith Lord, telling him that he was the chosen one and it was his destiny. Anakin hesitated, and the lightning that blared between Jedi Master and Sith Lord swallowed itself, leaving the three of them alone. Victory flooded through Mace's body as he regarded the Sith Lord before him. He moved for the kill, yet Anakin attempted to stop him. Mace knew that Palpatine controlled the Senate and the courts and needed to be destroyed. As he raised his saber and Anakin yelled that he needed Palpatine, Mace wondered to himself, why? Before he could deliver the killing blow, the blue blade of Anakin's saber sheared through his wrist, and Palpatine roared back into a lightning bombardment, striking Mace full on. Mace had been so focused on Palpatine's shatter point that he'd never even thought to look for Anakin's. The lightning blasted away his entire universe, and he fell forever. <laughs>